Crawford and Shane Fang. Why don't we flip to that and take a look at that? Yeah, so I mean, you know, we have seen both of these players play in your show match before. Ching Sang, uh, obviously top four at Hong Kong Nationals. He's a ProQuest champion twice running uh, and top eight in calling Singapore. He was a real Viserai uh, aficionado for quite some yes. time. I'm not quite sure how viable that's going to be for him uh, today, yeah. though. Well, Shing is one of those players that has a very solid grasp of the game and plays a multitude of heroes. Um, what he could be playing for this week... I'm not even sure. Uh, that, that's kind of the running theme of Blue Pitch is they've been playing different heroes. They've played like 12 different heroes in the last four weeks. So they and they're, everybody on their team is like very capable at playing multiple heroes. Um, yeah, of note, Shing got 14th at Worlds, top 16 at Worlds, a r- insane finish. Uh, very, very talented player and... Um, yeah. On the other side, of course, we have Nathan Crawford, who has been doing consistently very, very well. Um, you see many, many top finishes there. Hasn't quite gotten a top eight yet at a big event, but he's been constantly cashing at these events. And, uh, you know, it's just a matter of time before he uh, gets his breakout moment. Yeah, I mean, the guy, uh, we're talking about this off air, right? This is mm-hmm. kind of his first serious TCG, where like a lot of people that come to Flesh and Blood have played Magic in other games yep. in the past. Mm-hmm. And if you listen to any of the sort of your guys' meta breakdowns or discussions about sort of uh, decks and gameplay, extremely cerebral guy, really dialed in. Uh, and I would definitely consider him to be one of the sort of foremost voices on on getting value out of Rune Blades uh, in North America, especially Briar. Uh, I think he's, he's you know, we've seen a ton of different builds from him. For those that, you know, I mean, oh, you've got to go back and watch last week's games, not only because the experience or a team who terrorizes me at locals got, you know, got beaten in a best of five, but also because we got to see Nathan play this royal Briar list, right? Mm-hmm. This list that really, like, revolves around using the extra resource availability from Belitter Minoism, of course, being able to cash in that gold and using yep. cash in as well as, like, half mm-hmm. an embodiment. So I love that mm-hmm. example. Example, and similar to what Fire was doing quite frequently uh, as well to Icelander is like get a surplus of resources, make sure you can fight through all that Icelander disruption. It was a it was a sick game. Yeah, he's been evolving that deck and tweaking that deck for so long. A complete grandmaster at playing uh, Briar. Um, it sh- it should be a good game. Uh, anyways, uh, so for those of you on the stream, uh, this match is pre recorded, but the the second, third, fourth, and fifth game will be live. We will be commentating game one as if it were live. Um, so we're going to switch to that now. All right. So uh, we have the VOD pulled up and we will count down and we will press play at the same time. Ooh. And here we go. All right. All right. Five, four, three, two, one, and play. All right. Right off the bat, uh, Shing is not playing a <laughs> Visrai or Bar- <laughs> uh, Like I said, he is a very, very talented player, can handle a multitude of heroes. Uh, Nathan is on his signature prayer, though. Yeah, straight away, no, no crown of dominance here, right? So something a little bit more... Uh, straightforward in this Briar list. Uh, obviously, against all of them, you're less concerned about uh, that kind of disruption, the one that taxes your resources. Uh, key cards here, I guess, you know, we're talking about, especially for the Olden player, right? Choke Slam's really effective against the Briar. Means that she can't, you know, get extra at- attack power on those attack actions, which she's going to create, of course, uh, via Channel Mount Heroic. And things like, you know, Spinal Crush, taking away the opportunity to sort of uh, get going in on those attacks and really make sure they can't go too wide. It's going to be Shin going first, so this is likely just going to be an arsenal and pass back. Yep. Uh, of note, I think Nathan won the dice roll and opted to go second, so mm-hmm. that's an uh, interesting strategic uh, choice from him. Uh, double Nimbleism here, going to make an Embodiment of Lightning. Um, <laughs> whoa, whoa, pretty whoa. quick right off the gate here yeah uh, i was thinking an e-strike out here as well mm-hmm. uh this might be yep. an e-strike draw i think if we, we're hoping to have an arsenal coming in but all right mm-hmm. uh, th- this is one of those matchups where having an arsenal is a little bit risky but he does want to uh, churn through his deck a little bit um the the olden player is, is likely to try to set up a very disruptive turn on a pivotal turn so this would be things like uh, Spinal Crush or, or Cranial Crush or... Yep. Um, uh, CNC Pummel. Jokes, CNC Pummel. Anything that uh, can get the Briar off of a f- four or five card hand yep. or create a very threatening on hit. 
Well, like you mentioned um, that as well, uh, Ice Reactor is going to be pretty crucial if you want to try and keep Nathan off an Arsenal here. You expect to see that come up a couple of times. As that's where a lot of Briar's strength comes from, if she can really go that extra wide here. This is still, a, can, this is still significant damage being uh, thrown uh, Shing's way here. This is a good old 11, so it'll, it'll still need to be a response of some sort. Yeah, we're, we're probably going to see a, a two or three card block here, um, unless the uh, Olden player has a ridiculously disruptive hand but even if he has a disruptive hand he'd probably hold it uh as we see as spinal crush and command and conquer two of those cards you were talking about uh two pivotal cards there and an ice react as well hmm. yeah okay i mean it makes sense you, again keeping this bright player off arsenal as much as mm -hmm. possible you mentioned obviously that uh sometimes having an arsenal uh leaves you open to the CNC pummel approach, but really denying... Sometimes it's it's enough just to deny the Rosetta at the end of the turn here. It's a warm four being returned here by Shing after offering that two-card block. Yeah, one of the key things we're going to see in this matchup is that the embodiment of Earth, plus the fact that uh, Nathan has access to four armor uh, on a whim, uh, means the first few frosty hammers are not really going to get much done. Um so, you know, going with a warm hammer or frosty hammer is pretty much the same thing until the mm -hmm. armor is gone. So I would say red earth law surge is, is, I mean, at least in the past, not super common inclusion in these uh -huh. prior decks. This is a very cool attack that Nathan is presenting, just adding five onto the snatch here. So, uh, again, this is definitely going to be asking for a, a three card block. And there's always the question of, you know, this card getting an arsenal. There's an opportunity to ice react here. So she will have to be happy with that. But uh, much yeah. taller than you often expect from uh, Briar. Once we see a CMH come down, maybe get a little bit more width here. But this is a frostier hammer now. And again, that embodiment is not up. Yep. So if uh, Nathan has a good hand here, we'll probably see a Crown of Providence plus a Grass Block. If not, uh, he will probably just take this. Uh, also, if he has enough energy, he's going to have Tunic next turn. So the Tunic kind of allows him to play around a single Frostbite. However, in this matchup, you're generally going to want to be using the Tunic for Rosetta Thorn. Um, obviously, that's a little bit tougher with the, with the Stalagmite in play. Yeah. Um, Shang is obviously going to be very... He's going to be looking to get maximum value from his Stalagmite to deny um, Rosetta Thorn swings. Uh, yeah, maybe, jamming that in on a big turn, right? Pretty crucial mm -hmm. just to um, deny that extra... With the way from the Briar player. Another Red Law Surge. <laughs> okay, another plus yeah. five on this next yeah. attack action. It's it's like we're playing uh, Tales of Arius Limited all over again here. <laughs> oh, Earth this surge. is cute. Mm -hmm. Into a Lightning Surge here. So nine go again here because it came from Arsenal. Now that uh, is a, that's a good number, Josh. Not not too shabby at all to open up here. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty chunky attack. And... The nice thing here is that the Briar player has two cards in hand, makes him very resilient against uh, Ice React here. Uh, also, this is a turn where you wouldn't get much value out of uh, blocking the Stalagmite. Switching ops to go for here. There's, I, again, there's always the question of, uh, you're on three for the Tunic here, so Crown is open. I do wonder, like, while we see a two-card block here, uh, this will still get through, of course, for damage. How like how effectively can you use your crown when you're not using Ram's head, right? Because you know on your opponent's turn, uh, let's say you don't have tunic up, like it probably doesn't feel nearly as good to pitch to that crown when you don't have anything to do with the other resources, unless there's like some arcane you can block with null rune boots. Um, typically, when you're using the uh, tunic with the uh, stalagmite, you're going to be using that to get a five card hand to block with or to disrupt with. Um, yeah, it's a little bit clunky without the uh, Ram's Head, but in this matchup, the Stalagmite is, like, king. It could easily block 10 damage uh, over the course of the game. We see Rosetta Thorn there getting good value. Um, so, of note, Nathan's Tunic went to 3. He immediately used it. However, Shing's Tunic has been at 3 and still has yet to be used. Uh, this kind of is telling me that... Okay, speaking of that... <laughs> uh, so this is a good opportunity here to play something that costs four. Okay. Yeah, yeah. here's that choke slam we talked about earlier mm -hmm. on. This is extremely relevant now. Uh, again, sometimes when there's like two cards on Arsenal and Tunic counter up, you fear like a, a pummeled Command and Conquer. Uh, choke slam, obviously, uh, pretty scary in its own right. Now, Nathan hasn't presented a CMH. This obviously does turn off Nimbleism and a lot of those, uh, you know, effects that add power to attacks here. So... Briar doesn't want to block at all, but when you're dealing with disruptive on hits like this, you may have to make that tough decision and go down to a smaller hand and hope that, hey, maybe you can still put a 
a large e-strike or, or something in your opponent's face. And so far, Nathan's done a pretty good job of going tall. The problem is that embodiment. He played a, a sort of a blank force of nature last turn with no mm -hmm. follow-up. He just went for the Rosetta to get his embodiment. So Nathan mm -hmm. doesn't want to sort of lose this for nothing. Mm -hmm. The there might threaten the width of his next turn. Yep. The... Uh... <sighs> Having this embodiment of Earth is actually pretty key here because it allows a very clean block with uh, a card from hand plus grasp, or um, you know, it, or it, he could throw his armor plus a, a two block would also be okay here. Um, so I, I kind of want to point this out that we've seen Shing sit on the his arsenal card for like four turns now. Yeah, he he placed that on turn zero and he has not used it. Um, in this matchup, you're, I, if I had to guess, that's probably Pummel. And so Nathan is probably picking up on that as well, that that is Pummel in the arsenal. And the timing hasn't really been there, right? Pummel's turned off mm -hmm. here. There's no, there's no resources to play it. If this choke yeah. slam was a command and conquer, it would be on like Donkey Kong. I mean, Nathan would be incentivized to actually block with Crown of Providence to try and neutralize the, mm -hmm. the Pummel CNC. So it hasn't just lined up as well as Shing would have liked it to be. And Shing is definitely wanting to be as, as disruptive as, as possible in this matchup. And in fairness, Josh, he's, he's taken quite a lot of damage in order to do so. And we haven't even seen any sort of Channel Mount heroics or, or the like yet, right? And he's taken a you know, solid 12 damage as all of him. So yep. he wants to be aggressive here, but we'll have to see how far that gets him. That is a two-card block, though, from Nathan there. That, that was. And we saw a card that I think uh, Nathan has liked quite a bit rights of replenishment that's a card that uh kind of insulates you against fatigue and that's a card that uh, nathan has been uh, a big proponent of yeah you play two um, of them and it gives you an anti-fatigue loop i guess evergreen red evergreen was also an option for a while mm -hmm. um that's not the go here but is that e-strike uh this will get i guess the embodiment uh, go again right yeah e-strike uh with go again and draw a card i heard is a uh, pretty good uh, so Shing's looking at five Gogan here. Uh, another situation where uh, I can't I, turn the, off the Rosetta. Yeah, oh, it's, it, the, what I'm trying to think here is like a little bit on the more macro scale here. Like um, we haven't seen a CMH for like what is this four or five turns now? So yep. um, Nathan's kind of due for a CMH. If I had to guess, he's probably either has one or he's going to have one next turn. Um, so, I mean, Shing looks like he's going to take some damage here to throw a disruptive attack back at uh, Nathan. Uh, he might have it covered. That was five power E-Strike. So we had uh, the Macho Grande and the Stalagmite. That's five. And right. this is just a Rosetta for two. There was no non-attack yep. played this turn. So one card from hand would answer this, and Shing would still be able to, mm -hmm. you know, presumably make something happen on, on the crack back here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we might, we might see a... A ice react here, or uh, if the hand, uh, yeah, Terra Sunder is not a very good card when the uh, when the Briar still has armor. So um, I guess we'll see here. Like, I, I don't think this will be a super super threatening turn unless this is a uh, two cost card, and looks like it's just an e strike. So that pummel in Arsenal, which we, we we're not one hundred percent sure, but we suspect it is um, not going to see the light of day for another turn. I mean, Shane just doesn't have the, the, the surplus of cards to, to play it either, mm -hmm. uh, unless he wants to feel really bad and, and sort of whale, yep. you know, pummel a whale or anything mm -hmm. like that. He's constantly yep. having at least two cards stripped from his hand on many of these turns. So it's not lining up the way he'd like it to. That was, you know, an E-Strike for seven. Nathan says, oh, I'm taking it. And <laughs> Here we go. See you, mage time. And this is the reason why. This is the uh, pillar and cornerstone of the deck, CMH here. Um. Now, the most important thing with CMH is to get at least nine value out of it. Because if okay. you got six value out of it, you basically just played two nimblisms. Right. So the, we're going to be seeing how much value Nathan gets out of this. Probably it's going to be reduced a little bit because Oldham likely has a ice card. So ice react here going to obviously uh, save him a ton of damage if, if he has one. There's always the chance that, you know, we can we can get some more cards into our hands, though, via things like, mm -hmm. um, you know, Sonata and stuff like that. So, ah, ah. Uh, there Looks like go. I've already seen this game. <laughs> oh, what a... You're, you're, you're an oracle here. All right, so not paying into Sonata. Still going to get the Yellow Rabble, though. Ah. Uh, and now, not, some people might wonder why the Yellow Ravenous Rabble. Red is very standard. Uh, talking to Nathan, he says, this is actually just um, insurance against hypothermia. 
I want some more natural go again cards in my deck. I'm not, you know, trying to con- conform to like belittle minimalism deck building constraints. You know, it's a four power uh, on print, but I still want something else that can continue to push some damage. And hey, you know, three, you know, <laughs> three damage is still good if I top the red here. So, all right, Scar uh, already has go again naturally. It is going to gobble up the embodiment, but that's a pretty impressive seven damage being presented, and that can still sat on yep. two cards here. So CMH counter at one, I guess you could call it that. So CMH has gotten three values so far. Um, obviously, it's going to stick around till next turn. So he just needs to play out two more uh, attacks and he'll have uh, gotten value. Obviously, if he can play like four, that's obviously ridiculous value. So We know the rabble's there. Yeah. So we are over halfway yeah. to, to getting yeah. full value at, at the very least here. He, this is one of those situations where I think the Oldham is almost certainly going to ice react here. Um, it, it turns your two or three block into six block here. Um, also, the a stalagmite block here would also do decently. Mm-hmm. Um, it would it would uh, force Nathan to pitch the uh, the uh, ravenous rabble yellow for the Rosetta. Um, I guess there's you know a few lines that Shane can take here. It kind of depends on what his hand is. Yeah, being pretty deliberate here and blocking, because Shing has to understand that in giving up too many cards in order to block, the, he's taking the arcane there from Sonata. Um, yep. You know, he he loses the ability to disrupt Nathan midway through this sort of uh, time in the sun with Channel Mount Heroic. So the more cards he gets up here, the less likely it is he's going to be able to in, in inflict any form of disruption on Nathan. And if Nathan gets to do this again, another five-card hand yep. with CMH already on the table, mm-hmm. it's very, very hard to come back from. Uh, this Arsenal yep. card still sat here. We're not on a tunic counter, so pitching for Crown of Seeds is, is less efficient. Shing's thinking about how how we how many cards he could come out of this turn cycle with to threaten anything uh, back towards Nathan. I think if the tunic, if Shing's tunic was on two, this would be a very very straightforward play here. Um, you would keep your your blue, your disruptive two card or two cost card, and you would pummel that disruptive yep. card. Um, but with the tunic on. Just as uh, on one, uh, th- this makes the decision making a lot more complicated. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, it's not so straightforward here what to do. And I also think um, the uh, the embodiment also could be very, very relevant because even if you are able to pummel him, uh, if he actually has enough, uh, if he throws like an even block. Unless you're pummeling a red one, if if you have a yep. blue, if you're throwing your armor plus a uh, even block basically on the attack, and you're not using a red pummel, then you're not actually getting the crush effect on. Uh, I guess there's no two card, no two cost thing that cu- crushes, but that's um, right. I mean, we're really just talking about mm-hmm. command and conquer, I guess. Is yeah, like with a, with crown of providence up still, like that. You just shot that down. Yeah, it, I yeah okay. So it looks like we're gonna see a block here from from Shang. I see the buckle there, Shing. I see see that. Yeah, buckle. Buckle's a good card. Uh, Probably the best uh, card for Guardians. Uh, And a... Oh, man. Lightning Surge from Arsenal. So this was set up, you know, last turn. So, um, you know, as a... I've watched Nathan play this this deck quite a bit, and he's like, you gotta always anticipate for a cmh coming in the future by preparing for it if you can and so you know our, having that arsenal lightning surge was him uh preparing red pummel being blocked okay and no, ice, a react. ice react yeah. yep so turning I mean, that three block into a six block that lightning surge was pocketed i think on the it was like the e-strike for five draw plus uh the just two damage rosetta turn so it doesn't feel good to have a turn like that but you set yourself up, and this is just CMH number one. Shing's hand completely stripped. Arsenal sat there, stuck, not going anywhere. Nathan yep. obviously gets the turnaround. Ice React, man, he's kept off an Arsenal, right? So, yeah, it takes the edge off a little bit here, but there's a lot that can be done with four cards, especially if we're drawing more, and Gorganian Toby's doing just that. Plus, it's half an embodiment of lightning, so already Nathan's off to the races. Yeah, if we have another non-attack action here, in addition to Snapdragons, this turn could get very, very disgusting very, very quickly. Uh, there's that yellow rabble from the previous turn. Ooh, oh, 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 no, not what you want to hit. <laughs> mm, well, it, it it does happen. So that's four. Mm-hmm. Not too shabby. You can still present four go again here. It's a, it's a scar uh, if you're in lower life. So no dramas there. And again, uh, threatening a break point here uh, for that embodiment is still quite relevant. Uh, and he's going to get that. So 
uh, thumbs up there for Nathan, and he's got much more turn to play. Yep. Uh, again, I think these embodiments... The, the armor suite of Briar plus the embodiments is making Shing a little hesitant to to crack back because it can be shut down. Like, if you have a CNC, it gets shut down by Crown of Providence. If you have, like, another type of uh, attack, it gets shut down by the armor plus a four block. Like, it, it feels a, a little bit of a bad situation for him. Huh. Uh, there we go. Rights of Replenishment. Seeing play here. And uh, this, so this is 10 because a Weave Earth is going to buffer by one. It's not fused, right? So you don't get... Um, you actually don't get either of these modes. You've not done any arcane damage, so you don't get the non-attack. Uh, you've you've not fused it, right? What's great about rights is that it's not on hit triggers for putting these cards back onto the bottom of your deck. It's just when you play. You do have a couple of hoops to jump through. This is a blank two for six, uh, but plus three from CMH, plus one from Weaver. Has go again, so we can transition into a Rosetta Swing. This is still very respectable, and uh, Shing is <laughs> giving it due respect. That's that second Spinal Crush being thrown as a block as opposed to coming out on the attack, which can only be good. And this is a good time for Static Might, right? This is going to shut down the Rosetta Follow. Oh, no, it's a Tunic uh, Yeah, I think Shing is going to realize this. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah that's he's, not it. Yep, that's, not, that's definitely not how you use a Stalagmite there. So Shing... <clears throat> Realizing that uh, with the tunic and one floating, that was not going to do anything. Um, saving it for a better situation here. So, I mean, Nathan's still going to come crashing in for a little bit of damage here. And a follow-up Rosetta Thorn. And no arsenal means uh, no target if if a CNC shows up again. Um, again, well, it, yeah. this is like turn seven or eight, and that arsenal has been there for a long, long time. Yeah, Shing is leaking a lot of damage, right? So four damage on this, and then Rosetta. Uh, mm -hmm. He'll have limited ability to really answer this. Mm -hmm. Pretty pretty impactful, especially now. It's like tempo completely in favor of the Bright. Yes, your CMH is down, but you've gone through much of your deck already. We're like, what, seven or eight turns in. There's two more copies. We know they are there. Uh, your yep. opponent is actually losing a lot of their disruptive threats. I mean, CLF and Spinal both being used to block here. So... Um, you're not too displeased. There might be a chance for Shing to get some crown value uh, in the t in the turns coming, or find a way to make use of that card in Arsenal. But the Oldham is absolutely having to batten the hatches down. Yeah, I, the the Oldham definitely is going to have to slow down the pace of the game if he can, and uh, it, it's going to come down to whether or not he can disrupt on a key turn. And with 16 health, probably even less than that after after this Rosetta has finished resolving, um, the the amount of wiggle room you have as Oldham is really, really diminished here. And we might even see an armor block here uh, just to preserve life a little bit and try to get uh, maximum value from the Crater Fist. Uh, Crater Fist on two uh, is not... Crater Fist with uh, no counters on it is not actually that useful against Briar because very few things come in for five. Yeah. Um, so blocking the Rosetta Thorn here with uh, Crater Fist, even though it has no on-hit effect, is totally fine. Because that plus a three block can be used to block things like Snatch. Yeah, you're getting max value out of it. You're not under or over blocking at all. And this is a Frosty 4 coming out. So Shing at least is able to weather uh, the storm and come back with, you know, threatening Frostbite here in this, this Winner's Whale. Uh, that Arsenal card obviously still being sat there. And, you know, for Nathan, again, that's going to take him off a full grip here and definitely reduce the lethality. But uh, uh, look, if he can just turn around and slam another CMH down, I mean, Shing is going to start to sweat. Yeah, so... Both players knew that the force of nature was there, so it looks like a clean, clean four block there. Um, and this is going to be a little bit of a slower turn, it looks like, from Nathan. Maybe yeah. just uh, make a rune chant, gloom veil, uh, vanilla Rosetta thorn. Now, um, mm -hmm. this is this is swarming for three. Now, let's just this has come up so many times. If swarming hits and creates an embodiment. Does it check for that aura being created and then get plus one? Because obviously, uh, with two auras, you get the plus one and the go again from the after the rune chart. So that yeah. that would be after damage. So that getting plus one would be irrelevant at that point. Uh, right. But uh, if you just send the gloom veil without making a rune chant and they don't block it, it'll actually have go again because gotcha. you've made an embodiment. Yeah, but if um, it gets blocked here, I guess that there's no embodiment created. There go no mm -hmm. aura. So mm -hmm. right. Yeah, but he uh, used grass to make the rune chant, so this automatically has go again here. Um, this is a little bit of a this this smells like a setup turn from Nathan here. Um and so it looks like Shing took the arcane damage here and he's gonna get a 
you know, four card hand to slap back here if he wants. Uh, Nathan could arsenal this, or he could uh, play, depending on what this is. Um, hmm. I guess we'll kind of see what what he wants to do here. Looks like he's going to huh. play the Exude. Interesting. So the Rosetta Thorn would have been two damage, but the Exude here is four. That's full. But the Exude Exude in Arsenal is not the greatest thing. I guess it gives him a target as well for CNC Pummel. So Shin can just hard pitch here though for Crown and and, and have the mm-hmm. break point covered up pretty effectively here. So I, I think it's interesting, mm-hmm. sort of not choosing not to pocket the Exude again, which is can be such an impactful card against Aldham in some spots. And um, yep. I wonder. Uh, yeah, I have to I have to quiz him about this this yeah. turn. I mean, it seems, it, it, it seems like uh, he's going to get two extra damage here, but. You not having an arsenal card like that some of the, some cards that uh, are really good like toma harvest or obviously require you to have an arsenal so right yeah we'll we'll have to ask him about that <clears throat> all right well you do uh, do an interview with him so uh after that, that is true so, yeah that is true so Crush the Week presented here now this is actually a cross effect that isn't as effective against this form of Bry's deck because she's not she's not towing the line in terms of the belittle and minimalism packages deck building restrictions mm-hmm. So there's not a lot of three attacks here. Still big damage, though, and enough that, you know, Nathan wants to put two of these three blocks in front there, up to three, of course, because that embodiment of Earth is going to give them both plus one on defense, mm-hmm. which is, again, why you want to put that breakpoint exude yep. uh, in your opponent's face, and then, hey, just swing for five here for Blue oh, Autumn's touch. That that was four Blue Earth cards there. <laughs> uh, not really what you want to draw. This sure. also means he's less likely to have an Earth card for a CMH. Uh, that's a little bit unfortunate here. A little bit of a break here for, for Shing. This is the stumble he's been waiting for, I think. I don't think there are going to be many other opportunities for him to gain tempo in this matchup. Mm-hmm. The question is, though, at this life total, as Oldham, five damage is extremely relevant. Because if another CMH comes around, with a full hand, you're still not going to be able to answer all that damage. You've got to start, you know, the two and three damage that Shing's been leaking for a lot of these turns now is much more relevant. So much so that he has to consider blocking a Blue Autumn's touch. Yeah, that, you, you generally don't want to be blocking uh, Vanilla Fives if you have a decent hand, but like here he's very likely to throw two cards in front of this instead of just one, um, because you know losing two life here when you're at 13 is very, very relevant. Mm. <clears throat> the world we have just entered. Mm-hmm. I mean, Nathan is absolutely, I mean, he's taken this to the bank. If he has a turn where he can actually... Uh, you know, limit Shing's ability to gain some tempo just by presenting uh, a card that's usually used for fusion and, and making a rune chant, then he'll be very happy here. And uh, turns since there's been a clear arsenal on Shing's side, uh, like 12, that card is still parked there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, with the armor <laughs> still up for Nathan. All right, block for six there, Macho Grande and Terrace under there. I mean, look, and, both not super relevant here with, like, a full suite of armor up for Briar, though. Here's the... Oh, there's no cheating counter-up, Josh! Uh, this is, uh, this is... the. This goes from maximum level threat to... I'm going to give you some armor if I care about... He doesn't even have an arsenal to target. <laughs> it's, but, exactly, no arsenal, that is fair. Yeah. It could have It could have been a pummel, but uh, you're a, a resource pummel. short, yeah. and that's yeah. just the... Six damage, and yep, there we go, we're putting and, mountains back up. Oh, my uh-oh. God. And yeah, here we go. Ravenous Ravel gonna find its buddy Nimbleism here. Coming in for the full seven here with Go again. Um This is gonna need to be a Earth or uh, Ice React plus stag block, I think would be correct here. Um yeah. because Nathan has no floating and like the worst case scenario is that's a zero cost go again in hand. And then he tunics for Rosetta. So you gotta deny both of those here. Um so but the thing is, if you throw two cards in front of this, and then you also throw the stag, and you ice react, I mean, you're only just throwing uh, Winter's Whale back at max. So, you know, Shing's uh, stuck between a rock and a hard place here. Yep, all because of a Blue Autumn's... Well, not all because of a Blue Autumn's time. <laughs> but that's what it looked like, at least. Yeah, yeah. having to give that two yeah. cards. So, you're, I mean, a great point, right? Stag block here and ice react denies, like, 11 damage. Uh, potentially, yep. if you think if it's like a random scar or like an entwine, or it doesn't matter. It's like a, it, it could be any Cheerio left in yep. um, uh, with the Nathan's hand. Stalagmite is really Stalagmite plus Ice React is really the two abilities that determine whether whether or not an ultim is good or not. If you if you watch an ultim and you watch how they play, 
how they ice react, how they block with their stalagmite tells you what level they're playing at. <laughs> kind of similar to Dory, seeing how, how they, they use, use their bolters. bolters. Yeah. Yeah. How Dory uses bolters tells you a lot about what level they're playing at. Um, yeah. So this is a really tough position here. I think if you just keep, like, because Nathan has armor and Snapdragons, like, any hand that he draws that it, we have to think about the next turn. If he returns damage with Winter's Whale and Nathan doesn't like one of those cards, he can crown it away and fix his hand for the CMH. So that might be something that's going through Shing's mind is that he doesn't, maybe he doesn't even want to swing Winter's Whale here uh, because it gives Nathan the ability to uh, filter one extra card here. And we've seen zero. You brought up Tome of Harvests. I think it's a mm-hmm. great point. We've seen zero of those as well. I mean, Nathan. Um, can obviously have huge turns if he's able to pick that up while CMH is in play. Yes, yes. So w- whether or not he arsenals this card will tell us a heck of a lot about Nate, what Nathan's thinking uh, going mm-hmm. forward. Is this mm-hmm. is this a Crown of Seas activation? <laughs> no <laughs> way. All right, so looks like we're going to crown the first crown at 13. A little bit of an odd decision here. But, uh, okay, so so we do have the, if we have two, three blocks here, we do have the uh, Ravis Rabel covered up here. But uh, then you won't get to use the stalagmite here, so that's so that's a little bit odd here. Hmm. Yeah. Um. I mean, I guess like you're saving yourself some damage. I think at this point, Shing just might have given up on whatever plan involved the card that he stuck in Arsenal. If that's yeah. a pummel, then that's a, a real direct tell to me that he is off that disruptive game plan and, and might be trying to think of another way he can outlast this uh, onslaught, yeah. but with. Yeah, the Shing's path to victory here is basically cover up as much damage as you can and hope that uh, he draws four non-attacks next turn. <laughs> uh, that, that is kind of the play here. Uh, okay, that's Ice React. And there's the Ice React there. Going to save a lot of damage here. But Nathan still has the opportun- opportunity to tunic Rosetta here. Um, again, not using the stag here costs him four damage. Um I th- I think I would have preferred the stag block here, but Shing might be thinking that um, it's not this turn that matters, it's the second CMH turn that matters. Yep. Um, also, Nathan would not have Tunic for his second CMH turn, so that might be what's going through Shing's mind right now. Well, this is it. Uh, very unlikely that Nathan is able to get two Earth cards in pitch, so this will be the last turn of the CMH part. Uh, pretty hefty. Uh, Ravenous Rebel here. Pumped by three via Nimbleism. Pumped by three via Channel Man Heroic. And with four on the card, it's a whopping 10 go again. Yeah, generally when you attack your opponent for uh, their life total, that is... Uh, and they're in double digits. That's good. <laughs> Tunic's on three for Alden, though, and he has an arsenal. Mm-hmm. So that's nice. Might be the first time the stars have actually aligned for Shing in that regard for this match. Yeah, having five cards to block on a CMH turn kind of allows you to negate their burst damage, which I think is uh, very useful here. We're going to say a... F- Ooh. Okay, we're saying a full block there for 10. Going to put a card to the bottom. Um, okay. That was uh, three red cards of note here. So it's very possible that fourth card was also red, and he's just fishing for a blue here. Uh, but with Go Again, Nathan has quite a few options here. Um, if he has... Uh, Shing might have also been fishing for it. He might have had a blue, but he didn't have an ice blue. So, uh, but he did not earth react. So, <laughs> or, or ice react. So, yeah. My compliments to the editor who wants to highlight that Snapdragon Scale is, is still online. And uh, yep. if Nathan wants to go any wider uh, mm-hmm. after this scar for a scar, which is a hefty seven as well, no go again on the card because Nathan's at high life, which must feel pretty darn good here. Yep. And it's threatening Shing for a huge amount of damage. Uh, with Shing at one card in hand, one in Arsenal, it gets a little bit dicier here. So Shing really looking to try and triage this as much as possible. You know, we'll see if there's anything that comes off the back of these Snapdragons here. Shing is holding an ice card as well. That's also relevant because uh, the question is now, what comes after this second Channel Mount Heroic and how much more damage can Shing afford to just leak here and there by not being able to fully cover up these zero for sevens? Yeah, we're we're very likely to see Oldham drop into the single digits uh, at the end of this turn, and that basically puts him in kill range of the third CMH. And Nathan's health is effectively like at twenty or twenty plus here with his armor, so um, he's sitting very very pretty here. Um, very very likely that he can close this game out. 
<clears throat> tough, I guess, from the oldest perspective in this game. I think maybe a lot of people watching and sort of wondering, oh, like, why is this so damn difficult for the Alton? But there's a lot of nuance that we, you know, haven't had a lot of time to sort of bring out about how Nathan's been playing a lot of his setup turns. There have been turns from him that from, you know, any Briar's perspective would be pretty dissatisfying, right? Like just you know, an Autumn's touch or, you know, uh, exit, an yeah. E-Strike draw and like a two damage Rosetta. So there's a lot of nuance in how he's sort of preparing himself. He's also preserved his armor and he's been able to maintain pressure. Not something that Briar can't always do. We got a hit off that last Sonata, uh, which was pretty important here. So a lot of the time, the, the Autumn has presented, I think, a choke slam and a crush the weak. Those are the only sort of red guarding attacks outside of Winner's Wales, not all of which have, you know, been able to inflict a frostbite this game. So he has maintained this pressure for a huge part of the game. Uh, and this is just Oldham saying, well, I, you know, I can't quite cover this up. And Oldham's now um, are not just full of D-Reacts. We don't have like 15, 16 D-Reacts anymore, right? We are dealing with Oldhams that run Enlightened Strike, these Endless Winner, you know, try to get aggressive with, uh, you know, Glacial Footsteps and a lot of cards like that. So... Um, they want to be mid rangey at times, and that makes it a little bit harder to try and deal with Briar, especially if they cannot keep the cards in hand to present something disruptive, Josh. And yeah. then Shing draws like a, a hand that has at least three red cards, so you can see yeah. how his woes are just continuing. So uh, to, to, to kind of go off what you just said, that uh, ever, ever since the ban of uh, Pulse of Eisenloff, we've saw that the more defensive style of Oldham has kind of faded. Um, also, with uh, with just the fact that Dromai exists in the format, uh, Oldham has had to put cards in like um, Rouse the Ancients, E Strike. Yep. So they're going a bit wider now, Zealous which belting. means yeah, Zealous Belting. So their their defense is a little bit weaker, and you know this is one of those matchups where you know Oldhams would have loved to have Pulse of Eyes and Loft. Um, well, I mean, we're not even talking about the elephant in the room, right? The the Earth card density in Oldham is such that running Oakenold now is not really viable. You just cannot fuse that with any consistency because your deck is so heavily slanted towards ice cards, getting frosty hammers and, and be able to fuse ice cards and, and, you know, use ice react. So that was one of his biggest tools, you know, during a time where he was able to be more defensive, just be very defensive and then, you know, devastate you with, the, you know, it's like a dominated discard effect, right? Harder for him to threaten those now. Yep. Oakenold, uh, the favorite of a uh, good old Starvo. Oh, what a, Poor what a Olden fun. just can't get to use it, it seems. Looks like we got another Sonata here. Not paying into this one either, but it's look good. at that. Easy, easy peasy oh, here. Oh, okay. Someone has a lightning card in hand. Yep, most likely. Or uh, he has another snatch already. <laughs> that also Jeez. could be the case here. Uh, looks like Olden's going to pitch to prevent the arcane damage from the this is an ice tsunami. card interestingly mm -hmm. so. yes yeah, so nathan should pick up on the fact that he probably has multiple uh ice cards all right uh fusing here to give this go again four with go again here um and kind of the issue here is that even if you could block three on four multiple times you're still leaking one damage and that just has to happen eight times and then you die yeah so, so we have crown here that's why we have Crown to cover up one of those, but um, I, I have a feeling we're still going to see a lot of damage leaked. Uh, you know, Thousand Cut style here. Another Sonata here. Gonna okay. Make an embodiment of lightning. There we go. Let's have a look at the top three. No, we're not now. We're not pitching into either of these. So, mm -hmm. oh, that's pretty good. That's that another is. hit. Yep. So, do you think it's going to take the E Strike here or the Snatch? Uh, I think um, he'll probably try and take the E Strike. Mm hmm. Yeah, he can, yeah, he can the, bookend really nicely with this. Yeah, the E-Strike here with the Embodiment of Lightning is uh, extra good here. It allows you to go wider, which I think is what uh, Nathan's trying to do this turn. Um, the wider he goes here, the more likely he is to, you know, get Oldham down to, like, two. Um, that's kind of the just the, the general strategy against Oldham is that you want to have burst turns rather than, you know, you know playing kind of... Mm, What's it called mid range against uh, Oldham, if you can. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean this is this is a non channel mount heroic turn from the Briar. So mm -hmm. Shing may be coming into this thinking, okay, maybe I have a chance to breathe here. But the two Sonatas coming up, by the way, with the two arcane damage from which is not insignificant at all. We do yep. see the E Strike picked up. So E Strike for seven with Go again from the Embodiment of Lightning is is no <laughs> nausea inducing. It's actually it's actually just filthy. So that's the other one floating pitch to block the arcane damage. So hey, at least Shin gets full value out of the blue he pitched to get yep. crown. 
Yeah, That's nice. Exactly. Yeah, not not every day you get uh, full value out of uh, your blue pitch there. Um, is Nathan going to pump this by two or draw a card here? Hmm. Looks like he's opted to go with the plus two here. Okay. Uh, that kind of tells me that he has probably a another four power card. Yeah. Into it's a lightning Snap surge in hand. Yeah. I think. So there's a case to like, yeah, surge, get the onboard go again. But no, simply pitch this. You what? Yeah, whatever's in your arsenal, you kind of want to keep there for now. So uh, surge would normally be a great arsenal target if it was open. In this case, it's more than sufficient to give you the Rosetta. And I mean, our older now yep. down to six. That's a pummel. Hey, efficient, efficient yeah, blocking. When, <laughs> well, yeah, you know, when your pummel gets to full block, that's that's good. But when you're blocking with pummels, that is bad. Yes. So, uh, you know. Old off an arsenal, off a tunic counter. Uh, this is uh, Briar on a five card hand with tunic and snapdragons. This is quite possibly the last turn of the game. All right, and make your rune chant. Nate, this, is Nate, this means Nathan has a ton of extra energy here. Fuse bramble spark. Okay, yep. we are one arcane dead. Two fuse bramble sparks. <laughs> I'm just move this over here. Don't mind if I do. Yeah. Okay. We are we are playing Tales of Aria Limited. Look at us. <laughs> My God. Uh, all right. Double fuse bramble spark and do a scar. So Just all, like is, again, two yeah. arcane damage, two two instances of arcane damages from these fuse bramble sparks. Very very impactful at this point in in and yep. Shin's life total. And then just put a ten go, uh, put a ten damage attack in front plus the rune chain on the back here. So again, one blue pitch is going to eat up all this arcane damage, but. It's not going to feel good at all. The Oldham cannot get back into the driver's seat. Yeah, this this is kind of the beginning of the end here. Even if he has a blue pitch here uh, and he throws his whole hand down here, he's still going to take one from the Scar and then he's going to take four from the Rosetta. Um, if he, if Nathan has a attack action in hand, this game is actually over right now. Um, and I think this is a... It's a Weave Earth because uh, he he flashed it to fuse oh, right. the Bramble Sparks. Ah, yep, that is true. So, Shing will survive this turn, but Nathan will have a arsenal if he wants. I guess maybe he he might be able to use the Weave Earth in the arsenal if he has a lot of energy next turn or a. Uh, I mean, Tom pocket it, it's something. Yep. Pocket it, it's free. Yeah, if you draw a tome, it's great. Also, it's half an embodiment plus one damage if it's a, an elemental attack. Like it's. Yep. You know, there are definitely some, there are some blue earth cards you do not want to arsenal, uh, for sure. Yep. That one, though, oh, is such. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yep. Okay, create a providence is up. I'm just saying, yep. you know what I mean? Uh, the yep. problem is, yep. is that Shing's not going to give any opportunity to Nathan to use his armor yep. because there won't be any attacks coming, yep. so. Yeah, if you if you end the game as Briar with all your armor still shiny, like. Um, that says a lot. You're, you're doing things correctly. <laughs> um, yeah, so Shing, just thinking about blocks here. Um, I I think he's just running through his head if he can think of any possible way to get out of this, and I don't think there is a way. I think we kind of just saw that the disruption from old him did not line up at the correct time, and we saw Nathan play play his uh, aggressive plan pretty much flawlessly. Yeah. Um. As such, we have a ten life difference and a ten life uh ten. 10 damage attack coming in as well. I'm mm. telling you, those red weave earths, not insignificant, because even on turns where Nathan is spending six, seven turns waiting for a channel mount heroic, he's still demanding cards from this old him uh, quite effortlessly and also inoculating himself to some degree against his disruption via like ice react and such. Like you present, yep. and it's, it's probably a game plan that works just fine against Iceland in the same sense. You are pre pumping, so not always mm -hmm. uh, great, but. Presenting these tall attacks, right, in a in a meta that's very block centric or has a lot of these taxing effects, seems like a nice little ad adaptation that Nathan has sort of made here. Um, so I mean, she has to be deliberate here. Don't blame him. He is quite deliberate in general. So this is taking that to another level uh, because he knows what the last card is uh, in his opponent's hand here. Uh, he's going to eat up that arcane damage by pitching the blizzard. I haven't seen any of those from the old in play of this game. No opportunity to. <laughs> To disrupt, and uh, uh, we might just see the rest of these three stuck in front. Yeah, yeah. Blizzard would have been amazing um, on any of the CMH turns. That would have saved him a lot of health. Um, but unfortunately, you know, Blizz Blizzard is a three of. Sometimes you just don't see him. So uh, it is what it is. Um, 
Yeah. I, I think uh, overall, uh, overall, I don't think either player made any uh, big misplays here, but I do think uh, Shing might have uh, tried to cycle his arsenal a little bit quicker. Just, I mean, with Crown of Seeds, you, you just want to get maximum value out of that if you can, right? Um, especially yeah. once your tunic is at three. Um, uh, I think he wants to, I think Shing really came into this game wanting to be very disruptive, mm-hmm. wanting to be uh, very much the instigator. And he was never given a window to do this, right? Briar wins the dice roll, goes second, and straight away, he's laying it on thick. You know what I mean? There's just no opportunity for Shing there to really set up for yep. And even when he does, he has that, like, two car plus Arsenal. One of them is the Command and Conquer. Mm-hmm. There's no tuning counter. Like, the one turn where he could have threatened yep. something. And his opponent didn't even have an Arsenal at the time. Half of it, the reason is because Shing actually ice reacted to prevent that. So there's another Command and Conquer with a, with a, it's going straight down the gurgler here, just throwing up as a block, and there's still an embodiment because it's 10 and Rosetta to follow it up and an Arsenal card. I mean, this guy might not have any gold tokens, but he is just, he's being, he's drowning in riches right now. Your boy, regular yeah. degular over here. <laughs> yeah. Who needs gold tokens when, uh, when you got CMH, right? Speaking of which, right. there's one more left in the deck. There, there's saying. one more left in the deck. <laughs> yep. <laughs> No. Okay, Toma and Harvest. Yeah. Toma Harvest. Gonna use that Arsenal card, tr- turn it into three cards here, and uh, five cards. Not not just a five card hand, but half of an embodiment already. And oh, there we go. <laughs> you called it. There's I need to shower. Image. I need to shower. Yeah. I mean, hey, th- I think that might be the best use of a Weave Earth in Arsenal, getting uh, yeah. mulched yeah. and turned into a couple of extra cards. CMH here is. This yeah. is. Superfluous to some degree. Uh, the entwine doesn't need a fuse because the embodiment of lightning is made, and everybody just showed each other the cards. You know, what I mean, it's yep. uh, pretty yeah, clear. It's like you were, you were dead. <laughs> that is, that is well, twenty-one damage uh, on this yep. turn from those attack action cards. There's so absolutely devastating stuff. Now, there's an interview here, so I don't want to talk over it, Josh, because it's pre-recorded. All right, guys, we just finished okay. the first match between Nathan Crawford and Sheng Tseng. Uh, this is a best of five between the card guys and blue pitch. Um, so we saw a Briar versus Old Doom game. Uh, you guys just, I got both Nathan and Shing here. Can you guys just talk me a little bit through the game? Go ahead, Jing, if you want. I, I, I do have a specific question. What was in your arsenal for so long? Uh, for like eight turns. Uh, that was a uh, red pummel. Yeah. I okay. Mm-hmm. Just didn't uh, have the right hand to uh, to attack with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe I should uh, change it with the crown of seed earlier, but uh, I'm I'm a bit greedy on the destruction because um, it's very hard to full brought a briar with mm-hmm. uh, channel man so. It's like I have to find a turn to attack, then keep my lead. Yeah. But um, it's like uh, for those turn, I I will talk a lot to play the pummel to attack. Um, I think I may have greedy a bit to keep the pummel for that long, but I, I actually think, I think I think this. Nathan picked up on the fact that that was pummel. Yeah. It and, had to be, yeah. It, ha- it just had to be, or because if it was a D reactor, would have came out sooner. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's what I put it on was it was a pummel, and he just never had the. There was like some spots where he just had to efficiently use tunic, or yep. he'd sit on it for too long, and yeah. and what that did was that tunic's what I'm scared of in this match. Um, if they have tunic in three cards, they can literally just ruin your day. Um. Mm-hmm. I mean, we kind of saw it with the uh, the choke slam at the mm-hmm. beginning. It's just so efficient with that tunic counter, and yep. um, but you do a CNC or Frostfang pummel, and it, it gets way worse. So that's why most of the game I just stayed off an Arsenal because I was yep. I was honestly scared shitless of it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a, a luxury that some heroes can uh, can afford, but not every hero. Uh, Nathan, do you think there was any particular? Um spot in this game that uh, you want to talk about or was that a fairly standard game uh there was there was a couple plays where my game, main game plan was just to maintain an embodiment 
Uh, there was mm -hmm. one where I made an inefficient play to uh, I made the the rune chant and then played swarming. He blocked the swarming, and the more efficient play would just have been Rosetta instead of playing the exude confidence. Yep. But I played the exude out to create the embodiment because I knew it would get two cards or an embodiment. Yep. And and so I did that, and it makes me less vulnerable to a CNC. So it's mm -hmm. just like. It was less efficient for sure, but mm -hmm. um, and then also there was two hands where I bricked. Um, yeah, I saw the four blue earth hand. Yeah, four blue earth, and then there was one hand where I did the exude, make a rune chant, all that, uh, and unfortunately Shing just, or fortunately for me, but you know uh, Shing didn't get any like strong disruption during those turns mm -hmm. to to be able to um, you know kind of get a stake in the tempo again mm -hmm. all right well that was uh pretty interesting to watch um i think there was actually a lot of nuance that uh i think a lot of people could not see going on um anyways uh so that will wrap up game one